thank you for having me here today. Um, it's great to be able to share uh, some of the work that uh, anti-racist and anti-imperialist organizations across um, our uni campuses have been involved with. Uh, the point I'd like to start with first is that uh, imperialism may seem like a phenomenon that only occurs thousands of miles away. And recent history, you know, echoes this. This month uh, marked the 18th anniversary of the Iraq war, the 10th anniversary of uh, the US intervention that led to the assassination of Gaddafi, uh, and the 10th anniversary of the beginning of the Syrian civil war. So this has uh, led to millions tortured, killed and enslaved, uh, caught in the middle of foreign funded wars that civilians never asked to fight. So it is kind of easy to think that imperialism is merely the result of, you know, men in black locked, um, locked in bunkers, plotting behind closed doors. But the reality is imperialism seeps into every asset of our daily lives. Uh, we see it in how um, our NHS was created from the pillaging of Malaya, the profits reaped from the rubber stolen and commodified uh, by the British government at the time. We see it in the infrastructure that we enjoy, the buildings, the roads, uh, and everything that was built on the backs of the Windrush generation and quote unquote uh, laborers from the Far East. So our lives in the West exist because, you know, black and brown communities around the world have had to pay for it. And I say this not to make anybody feel guilty, but to remind you all of how we are all forced and made to forget the horrors of war with the small crumbs of comfort given to us by the government to appease us, to stop us from revolting, to stop us from seeing the realities of imperialism that have killed literally millions over the past decade, few decades alone. And, you know, hidden behind bureaucracy and laundered through non-governmental organizations, institutions from universities to government offices have become mascots and investors of war thousands of miles away, right from this island here in the UK. And again, I say this to remind everyone that our universities are complicit and not just complicit, but instigators of colonial and imperialist practices. So, for example, at Goldsmiths University, which is where I've uh, studied and been organizing uh, on one of uh, the Goldsmiths own buildings, uh, Deptford Town Hall, which was designed to be a community building, uh, but has never been relinquished to the local community. There are statues of, um, of enslavers, of people who were involved in the transatlantic slave trade, such as uh, Nelson, Francis Drake, um, and various other admirals that have gone since unnamed. And this was part of the fight that formed, you know, I think it was, it's been about 10 years now since this has been brought to the forefront of discourse on Goldsmiths campus. But again, 12 years later, there still hasn't been any progress. There have been false promises made on the backs of the 137 day occupation of Goldsmiths um, from Goldsmiths anti-racist action, which I was involved with. And one of our key demands was to remove these statues or to begin a consultation process in which the local community would decide what to do with those statues. But almost two years on, no progress has been made. And this is just one example of how Goldsmiths is, is well, is just embedded in colonial legacies. Uh, so when I was an organization uh, organizer within GARA, we reckoned with the antics of senior management who secretly tried to end the scholarships for Palestinian students, uh, which was gained by a, a previous occupation about 12 years ago. Um, and the senior management tried to completely strip these scholarships without telling anybody, which was also violating the contract that they'd made with the previous occupiers. Um, in addition to this, we unveiled that years of art initiatives uh, research that was being funded by um, by fronts of the IDF of the Israeli Defense Force and even now on this campus to this day students are fighting against the implementation of the um, of the IHRA definition which seeks not to just um, diminish the, the anti-semitism uh, that students face but also is anti-Palestinian and uh, in essence supports apartheid but of course on a much more micro and interpersonal level black and brown students face racism on campus that impacts not just academic life but um, local residents lives of people in the community too 
So Goldsmiths University owns a majority of Newcross and continues to buy up more and more land in what can only be seen as gentrification. On, um, on a road called Laurie Grove, there is just one household that is not owned by Goldsmiths. And again, linking it back, these are all legacies of imperialism. The need to own, the need to change, to uproot, the idea of the white savior coming in under the guise of improving, um, improving a person's homeland, a person's hometown, um, all the while they profit and they displace people. Poverty in this country, and displacement, gentrification, they are no mistakes. They're not just part of the natural order. They are policies in place made to subjugate black and brown communities, uh, descendants of, you know, of those countries who have been colonized by Britain itself. And the arms trade wouldn't exist without the military industrial complex, which is a sole purpose of maintaining US hegemony and empire, even if it's by another name. The arms trade can't be extricated from, from the existence of Trident. How would Trident exist if not from the taxpayers' billions? How could politicians' pockets be lined with money if not from the profits reaped from selling weapons to sustain the war in Yemen? How else would there be so many young soldiers, young, diverse soldiers, if not for the recruitment drives on college and university campuses in our media, which promote free tuition, free benefits, um, a lifetime of support, all at the expense of becoming literal foot soldiers um, for empire, which ends up in the deaths, the murders of millions in countries in the global south. Now, I think it's also important to acknowledge that when we talk about the arms trade and we talk about the uh, talk about weapons, it's not just weapons in in uh, in the sense of universities directly buy um, buy funds or sell um, arms to other countries. It's also in the research that universities funds. So, for example, um, so much academic research um, actually funds and justifies uh, wars abroad. Um, from Goldsmiths College, for example, there is one alumni, his name is Lee Williams, and he used to be a student at Goldsmiths, but he has now gone on to be the senior project engineer of BAE Systems. Again, this is no mistake. Universities cultivate and um, cultivate an environment of of focus, of imperialism, of only of being gate kept into studying only specific things. At Goldsmiths itself, there are so many stories of women of color academics who have been ostracized, um, isolated, made to feel like they don't belong just because of the nature of their research for challenging you know, the patriarchy, for challenging white supremacy, for challenging imperialism in their research and trying to bring that praxis into their, into their life and how they conduct their lectures. In addition to this, we can see on a more extreme level, there are far right academics such as uh, Adrian Zenz, who is a, a German academic who is um, who is a far right evangelical who has who has written so many anti Semitic um, anti Asian and generally just very racist sort of pieces of work, but he is now being platformed by the likes of the BBC and other major news outlets as a legitimate source to justify um, aggression and war and hostility against countries like China. This isn't to say that research done within universities can't be used for good. For example, uh, at Goldsmiths, the forensic architecture uh, course uh, was intrinsic in exposing what was known as the Hannibal Directive, which um, which was a tactic of the Israeli Defense Force, uh, which was, uh, in which um, there were the Black Friday Rafa war crimes exposed by their work, by their research, and they mapped Israeli strikes over the course of a few days and were able to then show that um, the IDF were in essence lying um, about the number of bombs, the number of airstrikes that they'd committed um, on a, in a local town in Palestine. And all these things, even though they may seem unrelated, they are all embedded in a deep web of, um, of you know, of racism in essence, in which the benefit, the only benefactors of this are the ruling classes of the people who profit from the arms trade. It is not the working class. It is not the working class, whether it's here in the UK or abroad. Um, in countries that are suffering from war. Um, and again, this is why there has to be an emphasis on with research, it is important, it is our duty and responsibility to reject any form of partnerships that universities take with, um, with corporation, corporations such as Microsoft, who um, have invested deeply in Israeli uh, facial recognition, 
facial recognition AI technology, which has enabled the secret military surveillance of Palestinians. And this is something that we also fought at Goldsmiths because one of, uh, one of the seats attendant software systems is actually funded by Microsoft. And again, it's part of a much bigger web. And I just implore everybody to investigate the links that their universities have to the arms trade, not just directly, but indirectly too. Thank you so much for having me on today.